So here's a here's a as we transition from the lol cows to the meat of the stream, there is one video to rule them all to give you a preview of things to come. You ready? Chartsdale sent three dollars jobless Johnny, better known to us as Cog the Cuck seething in chat, brother. Why is Cog even seething? On, nigga, I'm not letting you on. Time's sake. Why would we let Cog on? Do you even like Cog? Seriously. Um, no, he's British. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I miss these streams. <laughs> I know Kiwi Farms thinks I suck. They also think I shit in a bucket. They're not exactly the highest of IQ people. I, 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 you run a farm called Kiwi Farm. You run a Kiwi Farms. Every drip of everything is on your shitty little website. I can't cover one person. Shut up, Josh. Shut up, Josh. Just because your website's dead. <laughs> Look, look at Josh Moon, though, the little cuck on Ralph's show. He's been called a pedo all year with a broken dick. And Josh, you sat here going, Hey, Ralph, how are you doing? How are you okay? How are you, how are you feeling? How are you feel? Can I stroke your ego a bit? Oh, my gosh. Look at them having a group therapy session. How dare Cog talk about everything, Ralph? Only Kiwi farmers can talk in all about Ralph, even when he's not live. Yeah, yeah. Josh can't take me because I don't use his website. And I tell people that you don't need it to find content. I know he hates that shit. He hates the fact that I only have like five pages on his website because there's nothing. You know, the best they have is you used to be homeless. You used to live in a council flat. You used to do these things. They won't invite me on the show. He'll invite everyone like Josh Moon and all the little dicks that all... They all suck each other's dicks. Oh, as soon as everything hits the fan for Ralph, who's on his show? Josh, to lick his wounds. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. They all can't wait to fucking give each other handjobs again. Cog, you and Dan still made the internet history. Yeah, we did, because we're different than anyone else. We're completely different from everyone else in this sector. We actually gave Ralph a slap while the rest of them just cry about him. I'm gonna go to Kiwi Farms and write in this comment section about how much I don't like Ralph. Nothing happened to him. Pussies. Thanks, Cog. <laughs> that's Cog. I think that's the only time in Cog's entire life he's ever been entertaining. <laughs> wow. But what is he referring to? Is it... This this meeting of the minds between Joshua, Connor Moon, and Ethan Oliver Rowe. How could such a thing possibly occur? Well, children of the apocalypse, we have a, I have a story to tell. Okay, so it all goes back to Ralph getting hyped for um, a Nick Fuentes rally. Now, this is not called AFPAC. I don't know. I, I don't know why it's not called AFPAC anymore. It's just called like the Nick Fuentes rally. And it was going to be in an undisclosed lo location, I think in West Palm Beach, Florida, way down in the south of Florida. And Ralph decides, by the way, you know what? You know, okay, I'll, I'll get to that. I, I didn't even think of adding any Nick Fuentes stuff for this, but um, I will, I will detour to that. Um, so Ralph decides he's going to go. He's going to fly from Cancun to Florida. I think in the last stream I was talking about how his plans look to be in a sad state of affairs. His truck is out of commission. Uh, people speculated on why that could be. He said he shredded the tire. People looked up the car facts for his uh, vehicle, and apparently it's in repossession. So I don't know if it's been repossessed or what. Point is, is that he ended up getting to uh, the Cancun airport anyways, and he flew to Florida, and uh, he got to the airport just fine, and then his Groiper friend, who was going to pick him up for the rally, announced that Ralph had landed, and thus sprung Vickers Trap. Dun, dun, dun. Vickers, of course, a million trillion steps ahead, had sent two different service processors to the airport to stake out Ethan Ralph. When Ethan Ralph landed, he actually did not leave the airport immediately, suspecting that Vickers was staking him out at the airport. However, when the Groiper announced on Twitter, uh, without Ralph's permission, I believe, that Ralph had actually landed and was now in Florida, they knew they just had to wait a little bit longer for Ralph to come out. And so uh, when that happened, he did get served. Vicious Vickers bragging on Twitter on his private account. Lean in close, 
whispers. The safe location was hidden behind a TSA checkpoint, likely drinking himself stupid waiting to make sure no one was waiting for him. Fortunately, gay bashing Yi24 was kind enough to confirm that he had arrived. <clears throat> so parties knew it was only a matter of time before he waddled on out. Oof. And there's the tweet that gay bashing Yi24 um, had put out to uh, announce that Ralph had arrived. Vickers follows this up and says... Ethan Oliver Ralph, convicted sex offender, after swearing I'd never be able to pin him down and serve him with my lawsuit, was served within hours of reaching U.S. soil. Hope he enjoys the rally and has a good cry on his boss's shoulder. And I want to say, is there like an archive of the video? I'll try to load it up on the previous page, and if the website's not going to cooperate with me, I'll just move on. Because it's not that interesting. He literally just gets handed papers in the, the airport. <clears throat> um... Yeah, it looks like we're not going to be able to luck out. The site's performance is all over the place right now because I'm ferreting things through a bunch of proxies to try and get it up because they, they, they're going after the proxy and shit too. Uh, Ralph says, not one dom, I promise you. And then he posts a picture of the lawsuit. And if this does not want to load... Oh, it does look perfect. Maybe this would load too? Oh, it did load. Are we going to be able to get the video? Maybe not. Uh, the, I believe that Ralph is being sued not just for defamation, but intentional infliction of emotional distress. And IIED, as it's called, which I have been sued of in the past, so I have a little bit of experience with this. IIED torts require a physical component. You can't just say, oh, you hurt my feelings, therefore I'm owed damages under IIED. IIED is a common law tort, which means that it's usually not even written in a statute. It's just something that we agree is like based on case law is a thing that you can get damages for. But one of the usually one of the prongs of IIED torts is that you have to prove um, physical duress. Someone has if someone like because there is occasions where like for instance, let's here's a real thing that can cause IIED. Let's say that your um, that you know a, a person a stranger steals your child and then lies and says that your child has died and uh you will never see her again sorry and then you find out later that she just kidnapped her and wanted, wanted to raise her as her own kid or whatever the fuck and then you get your kid back right that act even though that's kidnapping, that's a crime that actually has a civil component um, for emotional distress. Because distress. you can say, I went to a therapist, I wasn't able to sleep, my work performance was uh, was uh, impacted, uh, I threw up, you know, I, I have PTSD now. Those are all facets of a IIED tort where you're saying that you were hurt so badly that you were actually owed damages, even though it was just your feelings, basically, that were hurt just in a very severe and and measurable way. Uh, Vickers is trying to say that Ralph has caused him emotional distress, I believe. And to back up this claim, because he went online and Googled, what do you need for an IID tort? And said, you have to have physical uh, pains as a result of it. So he writes this in, in regards to Ethan Ralph talking shit about him on his podcast. 11, as a proximate result of the acts of defendants alleged below, or above plaintiff was hurt and injured in his health strength and activities and sustained injury to their nervous system in person all of which has caused and continued to cause plaintiffs great mental physical and nervous pain and suffering plaintiff has informed and believed and thereon allege that these injuries will result in permanent disability as a result of these injuries plaintiff has suffered damages in the amount not yet ascertained and to be shown according to proof at time of trial so Vickers is claiming that he is literally physically and mentally handicapped now because Ethan Ralph knocked him the fuck out by yelling at him on a podcast and he is unable to to fully cope with the uh, the consequences. I assume of his daughter being gunted and his his uh, his legacy now being inexorably intertwined with the Ralph Amell seed, the DNA, the swine masters. Uh, Direct financial wallet rape of him as it continues forward in time is literally debilitating. <laughs> and he can't help. he can't even get up anymore. He's got such aches and pains from the gunting. Funny. 
Um, but so, okay. So in the timeline, right. Ralph is now at the airport. He's arrived in Florida. He's been served and he's had a couple drinks. So here's him in the airport and he's, uh, doing a little talk, a little pep talk, um, getting ready to go out and face the world. And it's one of the most bizarre things. Keep in mind that he claims, uh, when I talk to him, which I'll get to, I promise that he, uh, has had dr six drinks at this point. He said that he was 68 days sober and getting served by Vickers pushed him over the edge and he got, uh, got pretty pretty drunk in the airport see you didn't understand why oj simpson is my hero he's my hero because he beat criminal charges and he didn't pay one single dime to the Goldmans or the browns minus the book they stole from him and um uh, I plan on acting in the same manner. Uh, and and also, I don't plan on losing because do you know how hard it is to prove defamation in California? It's very fucking hard. You, I'll curb my words. But it's very hard. And so... We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I don't like your chances. His skin looks terrible. Okay, here's the deal with his face. Yes, his skin looks awful in this video. I believe the reason why is that he has rosacea as a result of drinking. Like, when you drink, I believe that it restricts your capillaries in your, in your face. And that can, um, and certain people, especially with lots of alcohol, can give you um, what looks like rosacea in, in people. Um, I also think that it's Florida... And as I'm not a native Floridian, but um, as someone who spent most of his life in Florida, uh, it's hot as fuck in Florida. I, I want to make that clear. Florida is a subtropical hell. It is one of the worst climates in the entire world. I've been all over. It is agony to live in Florida. So he is in Florida in, what is it, July? July. Awful. Terrible. Very bad. You don't want to be in Florida in July. And that has uh, that has a tie into something I want to point out in the future. But <clears throat> he's there. He's pretty fucked up. And he was going to be staying at a guy called Black Swan's house. Black Swan's house or apartment or whatever. Um, Black Swan, if you don't know, is an ex-homosexual, uh, quote unquote. Um, he found he found Catholicism thanks to Nick Fuentes has disavowed homosexuality. And according to Ralph, his entire family is alcoholics. So... When he um, he arrives and he gets drunk, he calls up Black Swan and says, I'm ready to come over. I need you to pick me up. Well, he, he slurs it. Black Swan picks up that he's intoxicated and says, if you're drunk, you can't come over to my house. I don't want anything to do with any alcohol. Uh, so this is where he puts out the tweet saying, can someone poach me up from the airport? Um, Black Swan uh, communicates to Nick Fuentes at this time. From what I understand, I could be not 100% of the timeline, but he something happens. Um, Black Swan says, no, you can't come over. Nick, Nick Fuentes is told that he's uh, intoxicated. And then um, Nick pays for him to get a hotel room, uh, I believe is what happens. And then Nick gets the Nick indirectly, I believe. Uh, communicates to Ralph that he's not he's not invited anymore. Ethan puts out a, a pretty somber tweet saying, I think I'm going to fly home in the morning. All right, I need some music for this. Hold up. I need some. There we go. He's defeated. He's down bad. I think I'm going to fly home in the morning. Had something come up. Then... He now announces it. Everyone says, Gink's got your back. Good luck. But it's not over. It's not over. Because he says, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to attend the Fuentes rally too. He deserves support. I was personally invited by Nick. And despite having all these lawyer bills came anyway. It would be an insult to Nick and my fans to leave now. But he decides, no, 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 no. Actually, not happening. I'm, sta I'm standing my ground. I'm in Florida. I can stand my fucking ground all I want. 
and uh, I ain't I ain't going home, bish. So he poses himself ready to to ready to arrive. He puts out some more tweets. I'll read through. He says uh, in reply to Raphael Mania, unconfirmed but credible rumor, Ethan Ralph will be staying at home this weekend. He has been given a soft disinvite from the AF rally. Stay home and take care of yourself. You're gonna throw her out right now. Ethan Ralph says untrue. I will be at the rally tomorrow guaranteed um uh, groypers now in fucking panic mode goy from america saying don't go if you have any self-awareness elish zoomer says don't go if you respect nick at all uh real gunt guard who i believe is black swan don't quote me on that says no go home and detox um ralph says no i'm detox and i'm not drunk at all i will be there Anyone with a brain cell can see that I'm not fucked up at all. And don't you tell me what to do ever. Now, this is this is the issue, right? <laughs> um, all I guess every streamer ever has obstinate defiant disorder. I de I was diagnosed as a child with it. Ricada says that he's he's diagnosed with it too. Ralph definitely has it. If you try to tell Ralph what to do, he will do a 180 and do the opposite just to spite you. Um, he quotes Ocean Eyes saying, don't, don't go if you respect him. He all says, dude, what are you even saying? I had on East Slip Up Day when I got served. I'm not drinking and I plan on going to the rally. I was personally invited by Nicholas Fuentes. And he puts out a video saying that he's going to go. And uh, literally at a party now, not drinking anything except Coca-Cola. There's like nine witnesses. Real gun guard can suck my ass. Come and stop me from my personal invite if you want. Doubt it. This is the video. Uh, you show a video from three days ago when I was drunk. Uh, I'm not drunk now. That was right after I got served. Uh, and you got a lot of nerve telling me shit. You're nothing but an anon fucking piece of shit on Twitter. You don't tell me a goddamn thing. I will be at the rally tomorrow if they turn me away. I was personally invited by Nick Fuentes. I don't really see that happening. But, you know, if it does... Whatever. I will be at the rally tomorrow for sure. So he says for sure. Um ah oh jeez. There is there's actually a very specific video that I didn't have lined up that I absolutely positively fucking need. He's back and forth arguing. Ah, this is it. Excellent. So this is the video that I think kind of fucked everything up. Uh, he put this out. He's at a party with a couple of grapers getting ready to enjoy the Nick Fuentes second rally. And uh, this goes on Twitter. Ethan Ralph! 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 He gets a chant going for Ethan Ralph at the Nick Fuentes rally. Ooh, I don't know what partner. I don't know what you think you're up to, but there's only room for one cat in this litter box. Nick Fuentes pride uh, bruise, seeing that there is a uh, another person challenging his un, uh, his top dog status at his own rally um now here is where the timeline gets fuzzy so nick fuentes um rather ethan ralph has been contacting nick fuentes a bunch of times at this point i think that he said he called him like a hundred times and did not get a reply nick fuentes has a big rally or not big quote unquote rally coming up so chances are he is actually just working on his rally and isn't deliberately ignoring ralph ralph does not see it that way because his issue is that um the top dogs at the the fuentes rally are all like icing him out he says that they're giving him a cold shoulder he says that they're kind of telling him that he's not wanted that he's like um you know he should if he if he knows what's good for him he should not attend so on and so forth they're basically trying to pass along a message that he's not wanted. Ethan Ralph uh, intends to clarify things directly as Ralph does and uh, reaches out to Nick Fuentes for a comment to make sure that he's still invited, he receives no such comment. Then according to him, um, 
he sets that he has two phones. He has one for his U.S. number and one for his Mexican number. He communicates with Nick Fuentes on his Mexican phone. He sets down his phone and forgets it. He loses his Mexican phone. It gets stolen. Nick Fuentes decides to text him via signal uh, saying that he is completely allowed to attend so long as he is sober. Ralph maintains that he did not receive this message and had no idea. And if he had received this message, he would not have done what he did. Um, And what he did was he completely and totally lost his shit at America First and Nick Fuentes. Um, So, uh, I guess I'll just have to summarize this because I don't think these caps are are, uh, included. But Ralph then goes on Telegram. And he doxes the name and phone number of five Groypers, I want to say. I will, I will actually count them uh, just to make sure I'm not wrong. Uh, he doxes. Oh, there's so many messages. Oh, they all got deleted. This message couldn't be displayed on your device because it violates Telegram Terms of Service. He posted one. Actually, I can count how many of these messages there are. One, two, three, four, five. So he docks all of the... America first top capos, all their numbers, their, their names. And because usually your phone number is associated with your address information on white page websites, like, you know, spooky and shit, uh, it was very trivial for almost all of them to just plug in their phone number, uh, or their name and, or their, their phone number and get a list of people that have used that phone number and then compare the name and get an address for a couple of them. So we like basically provided the lead for doxing like a lot of the Nick Fuentes people that are like Nick, like especially Nick Fuentes is number two. Uh, that guy was definitely doxed um, directly because of Ralph. Um, so that happened. Nick Fuentes made a, made a vague telegram message saying something like, I hope someone's happy with the comp- with their actions and what that will lead to. And then uh, according to Ralph, we were all watching this unfold in real time. Ralph was basically outside of the rally in the parking lot and uh, tweeting and uh, sending telegram messages from the parking lot of the Fuentes rally before it started. And um, he went live. He tried to go live. We were waiting for him to go live and it never happened. But then his his, um, cozy account went 404 so they banned him according to ralph though he was live for maybe 30 seconds so they waited for him to go live from the parking lot and when he did they immediately banned him um as he went live so that uh i I never saw any footage i don't think that we could recover the footage of him outside the parking lot but according to him he was banned immediately trying to go live um from outside the fuentes rally and he said that the rally was delayed like 30 minutes because he was outside and they were afraid that he was going to bum rush the stage. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's funny. So I'm going to say that it is true. Uh, okay. And there, I want to show you, I wish I could, maybe the rumble. I bet your rumble still has rumble. By the way, me and miles Chong dog killer, uh, actually it was Vito the pedo who posted a clip of uh, Nick Fuentes streaming on Rumble and said, oh my gosh, Rumble is so full of anti-Semites. And then Ian Miles Chong, dog killer, retweeted this. And then fucking uh, Elon Musk replied with two exclamation points or some shit. So another win for Elon Musk. He's re- he's responding to tweets from a fucking Malaysian dog killer and a pedophile denouncing Nick Fuentes because, uh, or denouncing Rumble because they allowed someone that says things that they don't like to be on the internet. Based Elon, at it again. How many children wander around in Africa because they weren't harvesting, without any hands, because they weren't harvesting emeralds fast enough because of Elon Musk? We'll never know. We'll never know. But thankfully, he's decided that he really appreciates free speech, at least when it serves a stroke his cock. Uh... Where is... Am I going to be able to find this, or is this gone? One Tez rally. I would. I just want to show. Ah. Is this it? Did he delete it? Did it get deleted? 
fuck's sake, man. I just want to I just want I just want to show you guys the aesthetic of this rally. There's really the Sneeko one. Hopefully maybe if I maybe if I Google it, I'll get some stills or something. Alright. Is there a Fuentes rally archive question mark? And we'll see if the chat can help me. Cause I Ooh, I bet you it's uncozy. I would fucking hope so. That site has to serve some kind of use, doesn't it? Um, sorry, it's it's really important to me that I show you this this uh ah no this replay is from four months. Did he really delete like the entire archive of the fucking thing? They dumped it because of the audio. The audio was fucked. The first 10 minutes of the entire stream was in mute. And then I, I can't really describe this without showing you guys. Um, maybe the Kino Cathedral has it. Hold up. The audio was so utterly fucked. Because of... Um, okay, here. Is this it? Okay, yeah, okay, hold up. You're gonna have to listen to PPP and Worski as I show you this, though. It's the only way to get this done. It's really important to have the audio. Explosion. This is like okay, so it's muted here. You can see, this is how they started it. Honestly. Now. Still muted. Talking about Ram Rants, that's like literally okay. what I would talk about. I wish they would shut up so you could hear the audio. Years ago. Like yeah, Ram like Rants, that you. you Okay, you hear how bad Quintez's audio is? We he already won. See, he has he has a real microphone hooked up to the podium. This thing has a real cable that probably connects to something. Like I imagine that this is not just a prop microphone. They actually have this set up. But the audio is so bad that I'm convinced it's this. They probably like if it's called a crash cart in the data center. I don't know what you would call it in um in an audio context, but usually you have like a little shopping trolley that has all sorts of computer components in it and audio equipment and, and usually a laptop sitting on top and you probably have this audio cart set up somewhere and there's a tech there standing by the side to make sure that OBS is working and so on and so forth. Um, I have a feeling because of how awful the audio is, the audio cart is set up to record from the laptop that sits on top of it and not from the microphone that's probably several thousand dollars that's sitting in front of uh, Fuentes' mouth. Because there's no other way to explain how the audio A is in such a bad quality, and B, it picks up the, the audience louder than Nick Fuentes, unless it is the, the fucking laptop microphone on a cart out in the middle of the, the, you know, the group of people. Because otherwise it's impossible to achieve this le level of uh, audio hell Really, just, like I'll play it a little bit longer. How is it winning? This is failure. Watch my show. Guess what? <laughs> this, the it's like this ridiculous. Like they're they're projecting this behind him. I think there's one part where he's got like angel wings or something. Let's see if I can find. Oh, this looks like it. They have like it's made of bullets or something. They have like a, a weird montage of uh, of guns, and they have like the bullets, so it looks like he has angel wings and. To top it off, this I want to explain as the weirdest fucking thing about his entire rally. I don't know if you noticed this. Nick Fuentes is wearing a heavy coat. I assume that he went onto the internet. He went and said, I want some kind of Nazi surplus officer's coat. Maybe he went and got something off Hugo Boss to try and look a little bit fashy. Um, and then he even dimmed the color and made it like an old newspaper reel where it's like a yellow. It's like, I want to look like I'm a 1930s NSDAP party speaker. And I'm giving a speech on a Hugo Boss coat um, and in front of, you know, in front of my, in my beer hall. And that's what he went for. However, those coats were designed for Germans living in Bavaria, because I think the NSDAP guy started in Munich, 
And in Bavaria, it's cold because they're in the mountains, Central Europe. Nick Fuentes' rally is in West Palm Beach, Florida, the only tropical part of the entire country. He is standing there in a coat that is very heavy in July in West Palm Beach, Florida, in a tropical climate. And all I can think is, what a faggot <laughs> playing dress up for his little for his little high school AV club meeting as he talks into a laptop microphone that's probably about 10 meters away from him. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what a joke. And, I'm, and this is supposed to intimidate people. I'm supposed to think that he's a serious guy that has a serious movement that can put on serious rallies and he's going to dress up very seriously. And all I see is this little boy has put on his Nazi coat so that he can do a stage play and, and uh, try to be Hitler two, three and four. Um, and you can't even get the audio working. Uh, God, there was something else about this as well. that I found the funny. I, don't know, I guess he's deleted it out of shame because it was so stupid the entire time. Um, so there you go. That's the rally that Ethan Ralph was unable to attend because he was not cool enough to sit with the cool kids at the, at the Catboy litter box. Um, oh, I do remember. So I, I tuned in for just a little bit. I, I, it was boring, so I didn't watch it and I couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying because the audio was shit. So I, I was like, fuck it. But the, you know how he opens his, his, uh, big political rally where he's talking about, um, the really important stuff that plagues our nation and so on and so forth and how he's totally a serious person no really for real he opens it up and says he starts talking about destiny not the video game the guy he opens it up and the first thing that come out of his mouth are about how he had a debate with destiny and he called destiny a cuck and called, said that his wife fucked black men i'm thinking like you know, fine, whatever. You want to make fun of Destiny, go for it. I don't care. But that's like a Ethan Ralph thing to talk about. That's something that I would talk about on my podcast. Uh, imagine Donald J. Trump opening his rally, and he's just like, we got, we got some bad hombres out there. We got blue-haired people. They're letting their wives fuck black men. It's a disaster. Like, like you can't take that seriously. I mean, at least with Trump, it would be funny because of Trump. With Nick Fuentes, it's like you're you're acting like you're you're a level above destiny, and you're a incel by choice, a vol cell, you know, repressed homosexual bulimic uh, who's never been touched by a woman that wasn't his mother. And you're not really in a position to look down on destiny, as far as I'm concerned. You're, you're pretty much in the same boat. You're 24 and you look like you're 30. You're already going bald. And you're going to try to say that destiny's low T. I don't think that works out for you. So, uh, it, was, it was pretty fucking disastrous. And I, 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 I really, you know, I really feel bad for people who look up to Nick Fuentes because it's easy to laugh at them and say, ha ha, they're, you know, brainwashed cat boys and stuff. But it really, it really must be like, they are a lost generation of young men who are desperate for any kind of father figure. And at this point they've invested so much emotional energy into America first, uh, as like a last hope for um, American, you know, nationalism or whatever the fuck that it's just too emotionally painful for them to say, actually, this is fucking gay. And I wasted my time. And I waste and I I wasted my energy supporting this guy. That's the only thing that makes sense. His circle keeps shrinking. People keep flaking off. He can't keep anyone on his side. Not even Ethan Ralph. Surprise, surprise. And it's just really fucking sad to think about all those people who even still are like, "This is my only hope. I will never be happy if uh, Nicholas J. Fuentes cannot make me happy." Pretty fucking depressing, chat. Um. So this, this breaks down, the rally happens and we're waiting for Ralph to go live. He never goes live because of, um, the aforementioned cozy banning and Ralph gets on his plane and comes back home and we're all waiting with bated breath, breath, bated breath to see what the fallout is, what's going to happen. Um, 
of course the docks drops on at the right at the beginning of the rally so it's already like a huge shit storm i think that ethan ralph and nick fuentes had like the same number of tweets in the trending tag it's like nick fuentes had like you know ten thousand. ralph had like fifteen thousand. but because ralph rarely gets mentioned versus nick fuentes he they were both trending at the same time so uh all this shit about his capos getting docks was like completely usurped the rally and if there even even if there was anything meaningful to be said at the rally the fact that the live streams were so butchered as you saw that they were inaudible then there was nothing there was no way for fuentes to come back from that it was just it was ethan ralph's rally at that point he had lost and i'm sitting there and i'm thinking i'm ready for a good shit show i don't really care who comes out looking worse because it's like it's ralph and af who gives a fuck then i find out that um and i i, I wrongly assume that this guy was af because he's not Jaden, the guy who routinely should uh, co okay correct me if i'm wrong this is some deep lore stuff that i don't have 100 percent straight but i think i understand Jaden, the guy who turned on nick fuentes has a sugar daddy named utros can we establish that what i'm said so far is correct Jaden, um Jaden x who hates who now hates nick who shows up on kino casino all the time has a sugar daddy named utros correct Okay, everyone says Utros is the one who posted the picture of like the 14 year old girl working at Taco Bell and said Cunny, right? And referring to the 14 year old girl. Is this the same guy? Ultros, not Utros, sorry, Ultros. Is this the same guy? Yes. Okay. No. They say it's fake. Okay. I don't, I guess that's their, their line now. So that's fake. Okay. So I, I assume that he was America first, but then I said, Oh, that's fucking gross. But I don't know who this ultras guy is. Um, some people, I guess some people in chat are saying it's fake, but then what happened is big tech played this, um, tweet on his stream and he made some weird, like, you know, passive comment, like smirking about it, about the cunny pill. And then people in the America first chat were like, started getting excited for it. And if you don't know, I hate having to fucking explain this. Anybody who says that word is a pedophile. It is a pedophile dog whistle. It comes from 4chan. It is a reference as a sexual term for a child's vagina. Anybody who says that in any way, besides being like a direct quote, referencing something specific is a pedophile. There is no way around it. So when Big Tech drops this and smirks about it and the fucking chat starts going all caps excited for it, I'm thinking, okay, I am now firmly against the America First people. I want to see Ralph win. Ralph gets home and he's kind of aimless. He's doing his thing. He's streaming. So I agree to talk to him. And I played the one clip that was really funny, which was us bashing Cog. The rest of it is um, me guiding ralph through trying to get him to say as much as he knows about america first because i at this point i would like to see um i would like to see them burn because i'm pretty sure at this point it's like a pedophile thing it's like they're, they're all laughing at this and i know why they're laughing at it and they're not laughing at it they're laughing with it um so ralph gets on the tear and he doesn't have too much information about about america first that we haven't heard before the one thing is that he has he he talked about how the the those people that i mentioned are in some kind of like sussy squad and they're all weirdos that i think he even said that they were like pedophiles that were excited about lolicon and shit and he basically called them out as gay or as pedophiles and then there is another group of people who are ex-gays that Black Swan is a part of. So you have the Sussy Squad, who is like a pedophile clique in America first, and then you have um, the ex-gay people that Black Swan is a part of that are also doing ex-gay stuff together, which if you don't know, if you ever want to have gay sex, go to an ex-gay uh, group therapy camp together, and you'll you'll definitely get fucked in the ass. So you have all these ex-gays in America first. You have all these Sussy people in the click in America first. And then, um, but besides that, Nick, Ralph doesn't really have, at least that he's dropped. I don't know. Maybe he's willing, waiting to drop it. He's probably going to write an article or something. I look forward to it. I want to see Ralph's article. Um, 
but it was mostly Black Swan. He he uh, talks about how Ali Jamal, the Romanian guy, he was going to have a uh, party with at his house, uh, is basically like held in universal contempt by America first, and they only keep him around because he's got money, and he super chats them all. He talked about how politically provoked gave five hundred dollars a month to Nick Fuentes or something. And that's why he's like the only, or she's the only woman that's allowed to stream on Cozy. Um, and then the funny thing happened, and this happened like just at the uh, the start of the stream. I, I picked up on this. Uh, I, I I kind of was disappointed that Nick Fuentes hadn't said anything about Ralph, and I kind of realized that. Fuentes' silence and his complete lack of response to Ralph at all meant that Fuentes had nothing. He had nothing to say about Ralph. There's nothing he could do to Ralph. And his silence was his strategy. So I, I tried to provoke Fuentes by calling him a pussy over and over again throughout that stream. And Fuentes still hasn't responded. But at the start of this day, uh, the news came in from the Nick Fuentes people. The orders from the boss are clear. Do not give any attention. Do not interact. Don't even log him. Cut off all oxygen. So this is the Nick Fuentes strategy. He has decided that a complete and total shutdown of any mention of Ethan Ralph is uh, is demanded of the situation as a response. So Michael Alberto, who you may remember as being the little zoomy zoom, who was the quote unquote moderator for the Ethan Ralph Medicare debate, um, as chosen by Nick Fuentes, um, and the head of the Alberto Commission, who was to get to get to the bottom of what was happening with Ethan Ralph, uh, decided to go on Ralph's show to defend Nick Fuentes. His channel is now gone. His he has been deleted from Cozy, and immediately after this happened, um, the admin of the Cozy went on to uh, uh to say that alberto requested that his account be deleted and alberto has personally rebuked this and said that uh C cozy copying twitch's policies you can't have banned streamers on not even youtube does that alberto says that the cozy admins are lying so they banned him for talking to ralph against uh, their prayers marching orders to not give any attention to ethan ralph and then came out and lied that they didn't ban him and he requested his account be deleted because they didn't want to tell all the cozy people that they're just banning anyone talking about ethan ralph so this is what nick fuentes has done in response to ethan ralph dragging his cock across uh, nick fuentes's face he has signed a declaration that ethan ralph right now is permitted to say anything he wants about anybody in America first, and they are completely and totally prohibited from addressing it, defending themselves, or talking about it in any way, shape, or form. Ethan Ralph has just been given the keys to butt fuck anybody in America first, and if they dare say shit about it, they're banned. They're completely excommunicado from the America first cult. So, um, as far as strategies for dealing with uh, the hollering hog for the rage pig on the loose, that is probably the worst strategy you could probably have. And think about, like I said, the Lost Boys who are looking for a male figure to give them some guidance on how to, you know, in the dark times of our of our uh, hell world. This is the guy they look up to, and they're thinking, ah, Ethan Routh has challenged the might of America first with its many acting organs, the sussy squad, the ex gay squad. Uh, they're all, they're all armed up and ready to hit back. What are your commands? And he says, nothing. Take it like a bitch. I don't want to deal with this. I'm not going to say shit about it. Goodbye. I'm going to go play some, what's that fucking gay game that he and Beardson play? Is it Valorant? I'm going to go play some Valorant. I'm going to go play that League of Legends game, Valorant. And I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to I'm going to be a black girl and I'm going to shoot people in the head. That's what I'm going to do tonight. Bye-bye. Um and that I believe that is where we now stand in the America the Fallout. Ralph did a big stream. It was I I spent like 3 hours with him, I want to say. It was very cordial. There was one part where it got heated. And I, uh, not to blow my own horn here, but I, I felt like I handled diffusing that situation very well. And I think I kept Ralph pretty on point. 
Um, I was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't more to come out, but um, I think just having someone that close to Nick Fuentes, who's been a part of Cozy for so long, and by the way, who was one of the biggest streamers on Cozy, and I know that's, you know, past day to talk about numbers, but when you think of it this way, Nick Fuentes streams at most once a week, I want to say, and he is the biggest streamer. So let's just say that Nick Fuentes is the Tucker Carlson of Cozy. He's he's the big draw. But imagine if Fox News, except for when you know when they had Tucker Carlson, except for when Tucker Carlson came on, it was just dead air. Nobody streamed on Cozy. Nobody, nothing happened on Fox News except for when Tucker Carlson was live once a once a day or whatever. Nobody would watch Fox News. His own stream would suffer because of this. So Ethan Ralph was just kind of like he was on like six to eight hours a day every day streaming providing a base level of content that was reliable for the platform um, that is now gone from Cozy. And who do you have to, you know, to replace that with? You have um, that that one Zoomer, Groiper, you have that 40-year-old woman, and then you have Beardson, who's basically said he desires to retire now because uh, his life is completely without direction and he's crippled by his depression and the meaninglessness of his existence. That's basically what he said. So Beardson's on his way out because he's about to fucking blow his brains. <laughs> he's about to kill himself <laughs> because he can't take it anymore because he's a manlet. And then you have a 40-year-old woman um, who people only entertain because she has breasts and even though that they're incel Catholic rapers, they can't resist themselves. And then you have a bunch of fucking nobodies. And Ethan Ralph, literally Ethan Ralph leaving Cozy has left a, a fucking vacuum in their audience viewership that has nowhere to go now, except outside of Cozy. Uh, it's really nice. It's really nice to see. Um, I've never s heard Ralph sound so happy. And of course, I don't... I, 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 I definitely... He's never apologized for calling me a pedophile for like years. Or for having his his wife call him me a pedophile for years, so I will not say that I am like on Team Ralph. However, in this context, when it comes to uh, I I want to see Ralph do well enough that um, Nick Fuentes literally has to feel has to feel bad that Ralph's not with him anymore. I, I, it's kind of like with a breakup, right? I, I want I want um Ralph to do his glow, post breakup glow up. While Ethan while Nick Fuentes is completely silent out of public sphere, humiliated by his shitty rally, playing Valorant and eating McDonald's and purging it so he doesn't get fat like a bulimic. Um Ethan Ralph's living his best life. Yas queening and slaying. This is this is my head cannon for how this is gonna go down. Kumia is still in cozy. That's true. He is. I don't know. I I mean I I just don't see a path forward for cozy or for 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 Winter specifically because like, what is his, what is his modus operandi? Because he's not racist. His only his racist clout only comes from the fact that Andrew Anglin who has on multiple occasions says that he is for forcibly marrying off 13 year old girls to be impregnated at their first period. He now claims that's a fucking joke, but I don't think it is. I can say it's a joke, but I don't care. I don't think it is a joke. I don't treat it as a joke. So his racist clout is now gone because he tried to suck up to a black man. Oh, actually that was the one thing that Ralph had that on, uh, on Nick was that he intended to replace when he was doing the presidential campaign with Milo Yiannopoulos for Kanye 2024. Um, he intended to get rid of Milo by um, getting that fucking Ali Alexander, Ali Akbar dude, the gay Muslim pedophile uh, to replace Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo Yiannopoulos was, uh, who of course is like a fucking psycho who keeps dirt on absolutely everyone, who is like a Machiavellian type for the world's most retarded e-political, like just someone you don't want to ever have any dealings with ever for any reason whatsoever because he is obviously a fucking lunatic who is just, who is like sexually aroused by fucking people over. Milo Yiannopoulos. So he decides to come at Milo Yiannopoulos and say, hey, Kanye, we should get rid of this, this uh, this guy who has any reputation whatsoever and replace him with this uh, brown pedophile. And then Milo Yiannopoulos goes, hey, hey, mate, 
uh, I'm, I'm privy to the fact that the gay pedophile Muslim is actually a pedophile. And then he drops the documents right in front of Kanye. And then Nick Fuentes and Ali, Ali Akbar looked fucking retarded. Because as it turns out, Ali Akbar has been sexting 15-year-olds and Nick Fuentes knew about it. And what, what is Kanye's possible reaction to this except, okay, goodbye, faggot. <laughs> goodbye, brown man. Good, goodbye. Bye bye, bye bye, and then Milo wins by default, and then I guess he gets a lot of money from uh, Kanye before he retires. And by the way, after this breakup, Nick Fuentes, oh, it's so fucking pathetic. Nick, Nick Fuentes is like a super fan of Kanye for years. He wore all his brand designer clothes. He wore that fucking gay, awful, disgusting retard parachute jacket. Uh, even weeks after the fact that um that Kanye had broke up with him. He really saw Kanye as his escape route. Like, I, my shit's going down the fucking drain. I'm maligned as a fucking racist terrorist. Kanye is my salvation. I'll, re, I'll revitalize my movement. I'll make a fuck ton of money off this rich asshole. And I'll look super cool because I'm friends with the Kanye. And then he gets, he literally has like a, a Scott Terman, Terman moment where Scott Terman comes down and says, oh, you're going to cry now, cry baby. That's not a cool kid. A cool kid wouldn't cry and be friends with a Muslim brown pedophile. This is the coolest, uncoolest kid I've ever seen. And then Kanye leaves with Miley Yiannopoulos and he's just sitting there in his gay ass parachute jacket looking like a fucking queer. It's, it's the greatest humiliation that's ever been perpetrated upon anyone ever. And um, how, how, how? How do you recover? There, there is none. He has no way out of this. He literally must change his name and find another line of work that has nothing to do with politics or personalities ever, or he'll end up like Beardson and he'll kill himself. This Beardson's going to kill himself, <laughs> probably, based off what he said. And it's like, I don't know, man. As long as it is to, you know, make fun of Ralph. He can't even keep Ralph. He can't even keep Ralph around. Because he, he's he's so... He's so... In a, he's so... You know, because that's the thing. It's like, what really pissed Ralph off, I think, is not that he was disinvited to the rally. Because he wasn't. It's that Nick Fuentes has... Because Nick Fuentes, in a stroke of genius, sent Milo Yiannopoulos text messages saying that if we quote, if we kill Ralph, it'll cause drama. So he's like, I, he's basically saying to Milo, I have to find a way to get rid of Ralph without getting rid of Ralph. And it's like, if you don't want Ralph around, I think if you just say that, he he would respect that a thousand times more than if you do what, what Fuentes actually did, which was trying to like stealth ice him out of the movement, which is just going to cause like a huge personal injury to him that's going to build up over weeks, like weeks and weeks of frustration that just explodes one day because uh, you're sliding him over and over again as opposed to just like cutting him off, you know? And so, like, and that's his that's his tactic as a, as a Machiavellian. I've used that word twice now. I'm, I'm going to kill it, but as a Machiavellian uh, leader of the white race. Uh, soon to be president, allegedly, according to the Groypers, the, the greatest political mind of our generation. He can't even figure out a way to like politely get Ralph to fuck off. He just, he just asks people to be mean to him until he get until he feels very awkward and decides not to be a member of America first anymore of his own volition. Like that's not how it works. Ralph would never have come to the decision on his own. Like, oh, I don't feel welcome here anymore. I'm just going to leave. That's what I do. I feel when uh, Dick Masterson's uh, producer is telling me that they would rather have Digibro around than me. I'm like, okay, well, fuck you then. Bye bye. I don't need to. I don't need to uh, put myself in comparison with Digibro. Ra but Ralph isn't like that. He's not going to like take a take a hint and be like, okay, well, I'm just going to fuck off. And he's going to be like, wait a second, you're sliding me. You're not even going to tell me that you don't want me around. I'm going to dox you. I'm going to everyone that you know i'm gonna go on stream and talk about what a faggot you are i'm gonna make fun of everyone you associate with <laughs> there's a very there's a very big difference in the uh in how certain people handle things and a, a political movement's leader is supposed to be able to identify those things thank you for watching this clip this is the cac remember to like and subscribe